Gonna try something a little bit different today and we're gonna do an in-depth video on cleaning fish. So I've got a table full of crappie. I've got my fish cleaning station, my electric flay knife, and let's get to it. And I'm just gonna fill this table up with a few crappie. And we'll get started here. All right. So how I do my crappie, and some people might do it different. I like to grab them by the mouth like that. Then I'm just going to come in behind this fin and this gill plate right here. Okay. And I'm going to cut at an angle back towards the head. Okay. So see if hopefully you guys can see this. I'm just going to go like this, one cut that way. I'm going to flip my knife over, and I'm just going to follow along those ribs. Okay, then you'll flip this over. You'll see this is right up against, right up against that, um, this line of bones right here, right up against this line of bones. And then I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to take it off the skin on this side. Okay, now, normally, when you're doing this with two people, an easy way to set this up for, for a two-person operation is you'll just set these to the side, and then the next guy, when he's here, he comes along and he cuts this rib bone out. And then that will... Um, that saves this guy on this knife a whole bunch of time. These are easy to remove just with your standard, just a regular flay knife. Um, it's nice to have the electric flay knife for, for this part of it. And so anyways, we'll set this to the side, flip the fish over. And then when we're doing this side, it's a little bit different, but you're still going to grab in here. You're still going to make this same cut. Okay, flip your knife over. Okay. Same thing, we're right up against those bones and we're gonna take it off the skin. Okay, two fillets. Nice to have a bucket. Handy for all of your waste. You can use those in your garden if you want. You can throw them in your dumpster, bury them, whatever you want to do. Okay, so same thing. Angled cut behind the gill plate towards the front of the fish's head. Flip your knife around. Follow those bones all the way down. Flip it over. Cut it off the skin. Set it to the side. Flip the fish over. Same thing. Over and over and over again. So what we did, we actually cut these last night. And it was, uh, I think it was 1130. Okay, now here's where uh, a lot of people get in a hurry and they make the mistake of going from one side to the other. That's, that's one bad thing about uh, crappie and a bad thing about these electric flay knives, it's easy to do. Um, kind of a pain in the butt to fix, but what I do when I, when I make that mistake, see, I've cut from, I've got these bones in here. I accidentally cut clear to the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this fish over this way. I'm gonna finish flaying it on this side, okay? I've got these bones that are exposed now, and I'm just gonna come up underneath those. I'm 
And then I'm gonna cut like that. Okay, now I've got those bones going. I'll just flay it like I normally would now. So I was able to save some of that meat still, set that to the side. This one, same thing, those bones are, are, are there because I went to the other side. It really stinks when you do that. Uh, but we all do it. So don't tell me that you don't. Okay. Anyways, what I was saying before was we went fishing last night, got out to the lake. The fishing didn't start turning on till about, oh, seven o'clock. And we have been having a real hard time getting on the crappie this year. And so once that fishing started turning on, we didn't want to leave. Um, that's just the way it is when you're on the fish. Just so happens today is July 5th. So I had the day off and we stayed out late fishing. It was about an hour and a half drive home. And so what we did was we took a cooler, we put all these fish on ice, and went to bed. And actually when these fish are harder like this, it actually makes them way easier to clean. Um, so if you run out of time and you're tired, you want to go to bed, it does not hurt anything to put your fish on ice and go ahead and clean them the next day. Something my dad was, uh, he, he loved doing that. That always sounded gross to me, uh, but he did it, he did it almost every time I took him fishing. He'd always, he'd always mention it too. He'd say, well, are you gonna go ahead and clean your fish tonight? And I'd say, yeah. Like, well, I ain't gonna. I'm going to fill a cooler full of ice, and I'm going to clean them tomorrow. That's the way he preferred to do it. And the fish that he caught and cleaned like that, they always tasted good. And he, he claimed that they were easier to fillet. Um, and I think he's right. They are... Um, a pretty easy fillet like this. The, the meat's a lot firmer. I might. I don't know that I would buy ice every time I go to do this, but man, it sure makes it nice when you're coming in late from fishing all evening. You're already tired. You're already hot. You just want to go to bed. If you got crappie where you live, you probably know that they're the, some of the mildest, best eaten fish you can get. And easy catching for kids normally. And you get into a school, you can sit there and catch and catch and catch. And uh, it's fun times and it's, Great food. The one thing about crappie that I don't like is all the scales. There's nothing, uh, when you're cleaning up later, you will find these scales everywhere. They just, they just, they pop off the crappie and you, you will sit there and find them forever. If 
keep on cutting through that backbone. What we like to normally do with our crappie is we'll fillet them up like this. And then uh, last year, I think we ended up, uh, we caught a lot of fish last year. We froze a lot of fish last year. We ended up putting them into two pound packages and freezing those up. And we're just, uh, we're just down to the last of what we had last year and uh, so couldn't have come at a better time we needed to start refilling the freezer we also something that we like to share with friends and family we get on a nice pile of crappie and we start getting some put away then i don't mind flaying fish so we'll We'll give away packages of fish here and there uh, because everybody else around us loves to eat crappie too. And some of them don't have, um, you know, maybe a, a boat or a means to even go catch these fish. And uh, so it's nice to be able to share. These smaller crappie. They can be a little bit bigger pain in the butt to belay, but we wouldn't have kept them. But we did have a couple that were bleeding pretty good from the gills, so we went ahead and just kept them rather than throwing them back and having them die. Okay, the crappie are all done. And now we've got just to finish up with these bass. We just had uh, five bass. We weren't targeting them, um, but we did end up catching some and they're, you know, uh, not quite as good as a crappie. I still like eating bass, but not quite as good as a crappie, not quite as mild. Okay, so same thing. We're just gonna come in behind that pectoral fin towards the gill plate at an angle, flip our knife around, and we'll just follow that backbone. Flip it over, cut it off the skin. Opposite side, same thing. And I'm just gonna Mix them in with the crappie. I don't really care. Uh, they do taste a little bit different, but. Knife is almost dead. Okay. Got that part done. Now, show you what I do next. Okay, now we're just gonna take this cutting board off of here, just snaps right out of there. And then what we're gonna do is I'll put this plug in here for now, use this cutting board, and we're just gonna take these ribs out of here. So all we're doing is we're cutting around the ribs and we're throwing that rib cage away and we'll just take that fillet and throw it right in there. This is not the job I usually do. This is usually the job my son does, but his butt is still in bed.
Now with bass, where these two parts of this fillet come together, there's a little row of pin bones. So what I do is I just, I just come real close to that and I cut that little row of bones out. Throw that away. Then you got two kind of smaller pieces of fillet, but my wife is very picky about bones in her fish. She says if you go to the work of playing it, then there shouldn't be any bones in it. And she's right. So we try to do a good job making sure that we get all the bones out of these fish. They sure do. Sure is nice when you can just eat it and you don't have to even worry about it. You just you just eat. Okay, so now the last thing that we do is we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to wash these fillets. And so what I like to do is put these, take the cutting board off, put the fillets in here. And all I'm trying to do right now is just kind of get some of the scales to come to the top. Kind of clean the table at the same time. All right, now we're going to move these over and we're going to pull this plug. And then I like to just go directly underneath the water and give them a really good rinse. Get all the growth stuff off there. And then I just go back and kind of just inspect my work as I go to make sure if there's any pieces of uh, anything on there, I get them off of there. I'll show you what I mean. Along the, along the back, sometimes there'll be a little strip of meat, but it's just kind of weird looking. And then I also look for this. Get a little bit of skin on there. So I've got this fillet knife here and I'll just go ahead and trim that little bit of skin off of there. right here there's just this little sometimes they're along the belly too it just kind of peels off you don't want that you even want to save these little pieces whatever you can whatever you can get off of here
All right, the last thing we're gonna do is we're just going to package these up into two pound packages. That always seems to be a good number because it gives you enough for a good size meal, or at least a family of our size, a family of three, a good size meal, and then leftovers the next day. Okay, close enough, 1.99 and two pounds really does a really good job filling up one of these quart size freezer bags. It's a pretty good amount of fish here. I think we're gonna end up with, I don't know, maybe, maybe five packages. That'd be sweet, 10 pounds of crappie fillets. Can't complain about that. Can never hit two pounds right on the nose. It's 1.99 every time. You don't even really have to, to weigh them. I mean, two pounds is basically just means just means a full bag, full quart size bag. Looks like we're gonna have one smaller bag here. Okay. Not even a half a pound. So we're just gonna distribute that amount evenly throughout these other four bags and call it good. Dang it, I wish I wouldn't have put used that bag. I should have weighed that first. Now I wasted a bag. Okay, we've got four bags of fish out of that for a total of, let's see. Eight point three pounds. So, heck, I ain't gonna complain about that. That's awesome. That's it for today's episode. Hopefully, you enjoyed our in-depth look at processing crappie, and hopefully, you'll get time to go out and catch your own. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.